Recently, a tooth was discovered in Israel that is speculated to be 400,000 years old and human. This is very exciting and interesting in evolutionary terms, but people in the media I believe are jumping the gun and getting way too excited as usual. Everyone is saying how it changes the story of evolution. If anything, it enhances it enhances the story, don't you think? Many scientists over the years have speculated that the fossil record will be extended for humans when more evidence comes to light. That the fossil record is more broad and encompassing than we find it today is not that profound a thought. Darwin described the fossil record as a history book in which the first three quarters of the pages are completely missing. And the other quarter you find whole chapters gone, and the pages that are present are almost incomprehensible, with paragraphs, sentences, and whole words missing, and words with missing letters. So to find this kind of fossil is not really that surprising. And for the media to say that this will change the story of how we look at human evolution is slightly naive. As I said, this discovery only enhances the story. Also, there is a lot of controversy stemming from the fact that it was found in Israel. If you don't know the story, which is excusable, most scientists concur that the first humans originated in Central Africa, near the Great Rift Valley region. Dr. Leakey found the famous Lucy skeleton near Old Divai Gorge. This Australopithecus afarensis specimen was dated to be 3.2 million years old. Based on dental features, scientists speculate that Australopithecus originated from Caterine monkeys or Old World monkeys, Old World as opposed to New World or Platyrine monkeys. Platyrine monkeys have prehensile tails, Caterine monkeys do not. Actually, it was Darwin himself who described in The Descent of Man and Selection in Relation to Sex this relationship of the Caterine human of uh, before any hominid fossils were discovered and he in fact <clears throat> predicted that the first fossils the first hominid fossils would be uh, discovered in Africa For millions of years, many different hominid groups coexisted in what could be described as a kind of Lord of the Rings world. No magical elves or evil orbs or silly stuff like that. No. Um, however, there were different hominids running around upright, com competing with each other for resources and food. Uh, so obviously, they would have encountered each other been in competition, there would even be like predator-prey relationships. Um, in the African savanna, anything would have been looked on as just another prey item. I mean, even members of your own species would, could, could be thought of as food. I mean, just another piece of meat. Anyway, so for millions of years this went on. Humans competing with other human-like creatures. Over time, there were probably only one or two species of humans left. Scientists debate on whether to classify Neanderthals as a subspecies of human or as an entirely different species altogether. But whatever the case may have been, we find only one species of human left. The established scientific story now suggests that around 200 to 250,000 years ago, anatomically modern humans left Africa, crossing into the Middle Eastern region, and from there spread into Europe and Asia and eventually into North and South America. So the basic story is that humans came out of Africa and spread all around the world from a certain point. So now a scientist comes along and he, he found a tooth of a modern human that is approximately 400,000 years old in Israel. Okay. So now there could be one of two things going on. Well, actually three. But we'll talk about the third in a minute. But if you assume that this data is correct, that this is a tooth of an anatomically modern human, and that it is in fact 400,000 years old, that would mean that either humans evolved from a monkey-like ancestor 
of the Cataran group in the Middle Eastern region and then spread from that point. This has profound implications. Anyone living in the Middle Eastern region would welcome this data. They could say, in fact, that modern humans originated from that point and not Africa. However, another way to look at this data is that the established story is correct except that you simply have to go back several hundred thousand years. This is probably more reasonable. I'm not saying that we didn't come from Israel, but the case may be made more easily that we evolved in Africa and moved out, and that we are just now finding evidence that it was much earlier than we previously thought. Okay, so that's great. That's totally awesome. Either way the data falls, that's where the story will be. The beauty, that's the beauty of science. If this happens to turn over the established story, so be it. However, there is a third option. I'm not saying it is, but what if it's a hoax? What if someone, due to proud nationalism, wanted to fudge the data to say that, yes, this is in fact actually where humans originated? This is not out of the realm of possibilities. Because if you remember the story of the Piltdown Man, this has actually happened in the past. <clears throat> in 1912, an amateur scientist named Charles Dawson announced the recovery from a gravel pit in Piltdown, England of a mandible and several cranial bones in association with some primitive tools. The cranial bones were clearly those of a large brain human, but the mandible was indistinguishable from that of an ape. This combination of traits was precisely what scientists of the time expected of the evolutionary quote-unquote missing link between ape and human. And for 40 years, this fossil was the basis for claiming that modern humans had originated in England. Now how do you think those stuffy Brits thought about this? Great, of course. With this fossil named Eoanthropus, meaning dawn man, the white gentry of Europe and the United States could justify all sorts of distasteful ideas. Slavery, colonialism, imperialism, and you know, a basic disdain of anything they deemed inferior. However, in the early 1950s, in a classic example of the self-correcting nature of science, Piltdown was unmasked the faith. It was literally the cranium of a modern human and the jaw of a modern orangutan. Both had been filed, stained, and otherwise modified to appear ancient. This is just an example of what can happen in the name of national pride. So I've just wanted to bring this up, this issue up to my fellow YouTubers. Be excited about this discovery, but be careful. It could be a hoax, but it could be real. And if it is real, that humans came out of Israel, get it, Israel, Israel, anyway, this would be profound. And yes, many things about the evolution of humans could be turned upside down. However, we still evolved from Cateron monkeys. That's firmly established. And most of the other details are without a question irrefutable. It's just the time aspect that is being debated here. My opinion is that this simply extends the fossil record back several hundred thousand years. Is this profound? Yes, it's quite remarkable. But it is not too terribly surprising. <clears throat> but who knows? That's what's cool about science. The ability to turn over established theory is what makes science so strong and sure to be relevant for all time. Scientists do not say, oh no, we're not going to accept this. No, a scientist is going to look at it openly and look at the evidence and find out whether or not this is in fact from where they say it is from. That the story they are telling is correct. Okay, cool. That's all I wanted to say. Have a nice day.